Well, welcome back to another coffee and a chat. Um, so the other day I was talking to my spiritual adopted little brother. What a title he has, Keith. I praise God for him. I tell you, I sometimes think we are, <laughs> we are actual siblings because there's just um, so many things that are in common. And um, he was talking about how intentional God is. And, and it was funny when he was talking about it because I've thought many times of how God does uh, intricate weaving of our tapestries. And it's kind of the same thing, the intentionality of God, that he'll do one thing because it's important to in, you know, bring about another thing and how everything just kind of be, you know, begins to move together. Like if, you know, Marvin and I met through grandchildren we had in common, but we didn't know each other. But if circumstance hadn't been what they were for us to have those grandchildren in common, would we have ever even met? Um, when, you know, when he was putting up the, you know, hooking up the dryer and then he's like, we should inspect the dryer hose. And so he went and got a new dryer hose to run under the house and he went under the house, which is no easy feat to uh, change all the duct work and stuff under there. And I had prayed if there's any other issues going on down there, like, cause we often have issues with, with the plumbing under this place, cause it's getting old. You know, if there's a leak or, or something, you know, show him while he's under there so that he can take care of it. So if the dryer hadn't gone out, he would never have gone under the house to change the duct work. And we found that it needed to be changed. We we had some serious issues there and, and they could have potentially become, you know, as dryers sometimes do, a fire. So all of that was taken care of. And right next to where he was working on the dryer hose, he found a, a, a joint, a T-joint that was uh, going bad and we were about to have a leak. And so he called up to me and we actually had what he needed to replace it with. So we were able to send that under and get that, you know, so that dryer going out, stopped us from having a house fire, stopped us from having a major leak and everything was taken care of. It took a little longer than we anticipated because there were a few issues, but it's all taken care of. And I have this awesome, amazing dryer that is doing a wonderful job for a very little amount of money. So sometimes in life, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And I kind of want to talk about that today and I'm sure the title that I will have put up on this will be Gail. So you're going to know I'm going to talk about my friend Gail. Because our relationship is very much about how intentional God is with things. So she was today, uh, because Gail and I get together every week. You know, we get together one morning a week and we have a live coffee and a chat and we sit down and and you know to read in the scriptures to pray together to just talk about different things um and you know to talk about the lord and i love our time in fact today we went a little longer than we normally do and she's like hey do you know what time it is but it's just i just enjoy that time and the guys you know marvin is taking our grandson some back home and so there was nobody else here and the dogs were actually behaving themselves and being a little quiet and it just was a wonderful time to just sit and share and even though i've got a million things to do because we've got girls coming in tonight which i can't wait because i haven't got to throw my arms around one of my children in almost two years so my oldest daughter is going to be here and i can't wait to throw my arms around her i'm i i I was a mama, am a mama who loves her children very much. And I'm a grandma who loves her grandchildren very much and a great grandma who loves her great grandchild very much. But I don't get to see them very much because they're 3000 miles away. And, um, and I don't, I used to fly back and forth a lot, but after we got my mom and dad moved out here, that stopped. And now I've got some issues to where flying would because it's a long flight 
um, it would be very challenging for me. And I was um, talking with my aunt the other day because she was like, I'm not going to be doing, you know, she's like, I, I know I haven't flown in a long time and I won't be doing any flying. She goes, I just don't know if physically I could even handle it. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, you know, she's, you know, 20 something years older than me. And I'm like, you know, I'm not even sure I physically could handle it anymore either. So it's kind of at this point right now, if, if they don't come see me, then, you know, I don't get to see them. And so I am extremely excited that, um, my daughter's going to be here. So anyway, uh, Gail and I, when we were talking, you know, she was talking about how God has not, it's not just built this spiritual connection and being able to get together and, you know, um, to talk about the Lord and all, but how God has really made, built a friendship between the two of us and how amazing it is. And we began to do some reflecting and I was like, do you realize you must be really important to God because he brought me 3,000 miles so I could be here when you would need me. And, uh, you know, we we're just kind of laughing about some of that. But I want to reflect a little bit with you today about my relationship with Gail and how this all happened. Because I want you to think about the things and the people that the Lord has brought into your life because he didn't do it for no reason. There's a purpose. And I think that it's important for us to be aware of what his purpose is so that we can walk in obedience to him and we can, can uh, realize the, the full benefits of what he's doing. You know, he doesn't just bring people into our lives, you know, because, you know, for, you know, just because there's a reason. So I, you know, I already was here. Uh, Marvin and I had been married for a while. My mom and dad had already moved out here to be with us. And my mom had already passed away. Now, Gail's parents uh, were really good friends. They just lived across the road and and, and over a house or two, a, a door or two. And and her uh, her parents were really good friends of Marvin's and I. And, and I used to, her dad would get really... <laughs> worked up on things politically and it was entertaining sometimes to just sit and, and let him go on one of his rampages and, and stuff. He had very strong feelings about things and, and, uh, but he, it wasn't that he would be pushing it on you. He'd just be, you know, he'd just be going off on a tangent and, and it, it could be entertaining. And her mom just was, was a delight. And I just, I loved them both very much. They weren't all that much older than Marvin and I, I think less than 10 years, but, um, we just really enjoyed them and they were great friends and we miss them. Well, their health, both of their health started to decline. And, and this was shortly after my mom had passed away. And so they, her dad, you know, he got to where, you know, I mean, he'd be calling me on the phone all the time, you know, about this, that, and the other thing. And could you do this? Well, at the same time, I had my father, who had Alzheimer's and I could not leave him alone. And so her dad would be calling him, Oh, I need you to get over here. And I'm like, okay, I want to get over there, but I can't come until Marvin gets here to stay with dad so that I can come over there because I can't leave him alone. And I can't drag him over there either. It's, you know, if you've ever dealt with somebody with dementia, um, advanced dementia, you, you'll understand it's not that easy. And, and taking them places can be very complicated. So, and with my dad, it really could be. So anyhow, he told me, he goes, well, our daughter's coming down. She's, she and her son are going to move down here and stay with us and take care of us. And so when she gets her, her name's Gail and you got to get over here. Cause you got to know Gail. Cause she's not going to know anybody. And, you know, and, and her dad is, you know, he was a very take charge guy. And so he's like, you got to get over here. Well, Gail came down and I think she'd been here a few days and I hadn't been over there yet. I hadn't had an opportunity to go over because I was dealing with my dad and, and her dad would forget that I already had other resp <laughs> responsibilities. Everything did not revolve around what he needed from me. And so, um, Anyway, this one particular day, he must have called me three times that day. And he's like, you need to get over here and meet Gail. She needs to know you. You need to know her. This is important. Now, it really was important for us to meet and to get to know each other. 
we just didn't have any idea how important it was or what was coming. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, as soon as Marvin gets back, I'll ask him to stay with dad for a few minutes so I can run over and meet Gail. So you don't have to keep calling. I promise I'm coming. So when Marvin got home, I'm like, I've got to go across, you know, and, and meet Gail because Ed keeps calling and I got to get over there. And, you know, and so he's like, okay, okay, no problem. So he stayed with my dad and I went across the road. And I, rem I do remember that I had tied my hair on top of my head with, with like a handkerchief or something just to, <laughs> it looked really weird, but I was just trying to keep it out of my face. And, and I thought, well, this probably in the way to, you know, but it is what it is. And so I went over to meet Gail and I met Gail for the first time and, and met her son and, and, uh, you know, and it was just like, oh, you know, I, right away, you know, you knew Gail's fun. Okay, Gail can be a lot of fun. And, you know, and I knew she was going to be a fun person. But, you know, I'm like, here she is with her mom and dad. She's like, oh, my word, my hands are so full. I go, I know. I had both of mine. And I go, you'll miss them when one's gone. And you just left with the other. Even, you know, though your hands won't be quite as full, you're going to miss the one that's gone. I go, because I just lost my mom here not too long ago. And, and it was a lot of work when it was both of them. But I miss her so much. So I go understand and I go, I'm just really tied down with my dad. I can't always just run over at a minute's notice. She's like, yeah, no problem. I don't know why he's all worried about this, you know. And I go, because he doesn't want you to feel alone and you might need a friend. And so I go, I may be, a, you know, a phone call away, even though I'm just across the road. It might need to be a phone call, but it'll be fine, you know. So we exchanged numbers and did all that and, and uh, you know, and, and, and something started that day. We just didn't know what. So I, um, it wasn't all that much longer. I don't remember how many weeks or months it was, but both of our dads were having issues and her dad ended up going on hospice. And so it was December. I think her dad passed away December 10th and, you know, and, um, so she called me up, you know, that he was gone and everything. And it was like so sad. And, you know, and I got to go over there and give her a hug and give Wendy a hug, you know, her mom and, you know, and tell him how sorry I was. And, and with, you know, and I think Marvin, and I like got a card for them or whatever. And, you know, the things you do and no idea what was going on. So on Sunday, December 13th is when my dad had passed away and, and, I didn't know he had passed away. I mean, I got up that morning and went to check on him because he had he had put himself in bed for the rest of his days. That's what we were dealing with at that time. And, you know, he just went to bed and he said, I think I'll stay here the rest of my days. And, you know, and he'd get up to go to the bathroom and that was it. He just existed in bed, didn't really want to eat, didn't really want, you know, ever saw him maybe a sip of water, but he just was like content to just lay there and, and sleep a lot. And so, um, I had stayed up with him. I've, I've told the story. It's back in a video. I don't remember even what, it's one of my early videos, but I do have a video about the day that, you know, going through that with my dad and the night before he passed away, the Lord had just laid on my heart to go back and just, just sit with him a little longer. And so even though he was falling asleep and all, I was with him up till midnight. So I knew that it was sometime in the morning on the 13th, on Sunday, the 13th. Because when I got up that morning to go check on him, he was already gone. And see, it still gets to me. It was really hard because I wanted to be with my dad. But it was so weird because Gail's dad had just passed a few days before. And now I'm calling her going, my dad's gone. And I that day, it was a strange day. I mean, you know, when you lose somebody, especially unexpectedly like that, everything becomes really weird and it's not what you were expecting to do that day. But Gail came by, she drove up and she got out and she had this beautiful wooden box that, um, what does it say? Um, winter memories or something. Um, and it had this beautiful display of, you know, of uh, plants and stuff, you know, cuttings. It was, it wasn't flowers. It was done out of greenery and stuff because it was very festive for Christmas. And so she brought it, you know, and gave me a big hug and said, I'm so sorry for your loss. And so here we are, two grieving daughters having lost our dads just within a few days of each other. And, 
And, you know, and I told her, you know, today we were talking about, I go, I still have that box that's sitting in the TV room. You know, I go, I will have that box, I'm sure, to the day I die. And every time I look at it, I'm like, Gail was the first one that just stopped by to just show a little love and give me a hug and stuff. And, and, you know, what that meant to me and, and how much I'll always be grateful, you know, and she goes, well, you were the first one there when my dad, you know, and it's like, you know, God knew that was going to happen. Gail and I didn't know it was going to happen, but he knew, and he already had us placed there right, right there so that we could be there for each other. And so then she was, she still had her mom and stuff. And and then her son got really sick and ended up in the hospital for over a month. And so I would go when she would go to be with her son in the hospital, I'd go sit with her mom. And, you know, because now I was a little free to go because my dad was gone and the Lord knew that was necessary for me to be there for Wendy. And, you know, and it's just all these things that happened. And then her son came home and, you know, and then I would go over and to be with her son if she had to take her mom somewhere. And, and so God had provided because Gail didn't have a support system here. And I got that because I didn't really have a support system either other than Marvin. I had Marvin, um, but that's what I had. And so, um, I knew what it was like to just be stuck in that. So it's like I had Marvin. So now it's like, you know what, Gail, I want you to have me. And so I was there for her as often as I could be. And and anyway, and then, you know, the next, was it the next year that her mom passed away? Or uh, maybe it was two years before. But anyway, then her mom ended up passing away. And, and that was heartbreaking again because I really loved her mom. She was was a good friend. But then I could be there for Gail as she went through that, you know, because I knew what it was to lose your mom. And, you know, sometimes she just needs to send a text saying, I'm missing her today, you know, and it's like, okay. And, and then, you know, this here just uh, less than two months ago, her son unexpectedly passed away. And I was able to be there going through that. And, you know, um, but God had been doing things in Gail's life. And I'm not going to tell you all that because that's Gail's story to tell. And I do believe she'll come on here one day. She'll, I don't know, she might end up being my first guest because Marvin dragging his feet all the time. You know, you guys probably don't even believe I have a husband. You probably believe he's a figment of my imagination because he won't even come show his face. Is he ashamed of me? I don't know. No, I don't think so little on the shy side, maybe. Gail, she is not shy. <laughs> she is not shy. And I, you know, we're just talking today about where this friendships come, the different things we've been through when we've needed, you know, each other and that we've been right across the road, right there, that God strategically placed us right next to each other, that he was very intentional about all this. And now, you know, she's all alone except for the dogs. And we have these mornings together that, you know, and it's whatever she needs it to be. I, you know, I've really want it to be that way. Although sometimes it ends up being what I needed it to be. And today we both were talking about stuff we've been through and it, because there was nobody here, you know, to listen in on the conversation, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> and because even the dogs went outside and we we're just able to just talk about some really some real things that we've been through and how God how he works in those things and how maybe sometimes we thought something wasn't God well that couldn't be God like when somebody dies you know you can really be like why would God do that you know that's right. but it's not been that way because we can see God's hand in it and we can be that encouragement to each other. And it's like, I know, this is the one thing I know of all my neighbors around me. If something happened and I needed somebody, I know Gail would be there. Just like she knows, if something happens, I'm going to be there. We both will always do our best to be there for the other person. And it's like, God put us here to be that for each other. So... We know that even though we're enjoying this friendship now and the spiritual connection that we have, you know, to be able to share about the Lord and all, that it didn't just happen, but God put everything in place for it to happen. And he put it in place at the right time because we were going to need each other through some things. And he knew that. 
So I'm sharing this with you today because I want you to think about the relationships in your life. The things that, and even the job you may have or where you live, because I know where I live, God was very intentional about where he planted my roots, where he put me. You know, it doesn't mean I'm maybe going to be here every day for the rest of my life. Maybe I am. I don't know. He may, he may move us somewhere else at some point. We're open to whatever that God wants to do in our lives. But the point is that things don't just happen coincidentally. I don't believe in coincidences at all. But everything is very strategic. Some of you that have found this channel and you know and you've subscribed and you watch whatever video I put out, I, you're always there. And God is, is using them in your life. And I praise God that he is using them because I want my life to mean something. But for right now, at least in this season in your life, there's some of you that God has very intentionally brought you right here. And, and there are things that minister to you. It's not just by chance. The day that I woke up and God said, go just go make that video. Go make that welcome video. And I'm like, but I don't have all the equipment. Use your phone. You're fine. But I don't know how to upload. I'll show you. He just, whatever excuse I had, whatever comeback I had, the Lord just kept reassuring me, just obey me. Just go do it. It, it wasn't just a random day. That day was an intentional day. There was something different why that day God chose that day. And every day since he, he's brought me here. One day I missed. What was it? Christmas Eve that I, I think that I missed. And he just never gave me anything that day. And I was extremely tired. And I think I just needed a day of rest. And so he put it in there that today you're going to rest. But tomorrow <laughs> we were right back on it. So even what time of day, because I mean, if I had my way the day before, I like when he gives me something the day before it's all ready to go. And all I got to do is get up and upload it. And, and I even can schedule that upload so I could put it up the day before and it won't come out until the day at the time. I haven't done that yet. I haven't tested that out, but actually I'm supposed to be able to do that. So um, right now I'm trying to, I've got some money that was gifted to me to buy some equipment to make things a little better. And I have not rushed into it. And I thought, you know, maybe Keith was even getting impatient with me, but he called me and said, wait, wait, why are you going to do what you're going to do? Because I've been, you know, I've been watching your videos and I'm not sure that's what, you know, and, and he had some really good, because this is what he does and he's a genius on it, but he had some really good questions to get me to think. And it's like, you know what, maybe I'm not making the right decision here. And so, you know, God showed me some things that, okay, maybe I need to go this other direction. So I've actually maybe changed direction now on what I'm going to do for the equipment, but Sometimes we get in a hurry and we just rush in and do something for the sake of doing it. But God doesn't do that. He doesn't just throw caution to the wind or just do it because there's always a reason. And I think in this season in my life, I'm learning to slow down, take it easy, and really go to the Lord and say, okay, what do you want me to do? and wait on him to give me an answer. I'm not so quick to pull the trigger now. And I used to, oh my word, I used to get so ahead of myself and I knew I was, but I couldn't seem to stop doing it. And so I would go do something just because it needed to be done. And then it, well, it wasn't done right. And I'd end up having to do it again, you know, and get it done the right way. You know, um, right now we're looking for a truck and the Lord told Marvin and I, to be very specific in what we're looking for, because the, the Lord has, has told us some things that we need to do different. Okay. And so what we were, you know, we have a regular cab truck right now and it's time to let this truck go because it no longer is meeting our needs and it's having more problems than not. And so it's starting to become a money pit. So it's time to let it go. And the Lord said, it's time to get something new. So we know that now that he wants us to do something different. 
or that's what we believe he's been telling us. We'll see because we he hasn't done the provision yet, so we don't know what he's providing, but um, we, we know what we think we're looking for. And we believe he's told us that now it's time to have an extended cab so that we can actually take somebody with us. And that is starting to make sense. There's two people that uh, it makes sense that they would be going with us on some of the things that we need to do. So, okay, we get it. Um, he's told us other things to downsize. You know, I mean, he's been really telling us some stuff. And um, we're rearranging our home and the purpose of some of our rooms and how they're set up because that's what he's telling us to do. And, and only now we're starting to go, Oh, okay. Now we're starting to understand why on some of those and other things we're like, I don't know why you want me to do it, but okay, we'll do it. And it's, it's not something that even, you know, is a, a financial investment. It's just a matter of repurposing what a room is used for and rearranging how, uh, and what furniture is in that room. And then we've got some furniture. We just don't need it anymore. And it's like, okay, move it on. You know, uh, it needs to go to a new home. Let it go. So we're learning to let go. But we know that that God doesn't do something just for the sake of doing it. But he's very intentional. So I'm sharing with you about Gail today. A little snippet of the friendship we have and how it came about and some of the things that God's done in that and and showed us why he's done what he's done and how important it is. Because I'm hoping that some of you, I think, need, maybe God's wanting you to see that, that there's things in your life that he, it's not just because, or, you know, he didn't just give you something for the sake of giving it, but there's a reason. And so when we begin, the more we begin to see that, okay, my life's not about me but it's about him, then I need to know what he wants me to do. If he's intentional about what he puts in my hands and the relationships he brings into my life, then I need to be intentional with what I'm doing with them. Does that make sense? I hope so. It does to me. So for whoever this is for and whoever it'll speak to, I hope that it it helps you go that next step of where you need to be because that's what I want. Okay, so I think that will wrap up another coffee and a chat so that I can go. I need to finish getting uh, a room ready for, for some guests that will be arriving here in, I think, less than seven hours. So can I get it all done? I think so because God's going to help me. All right. I love you guys. Thank you, everyone who's subscribed. Those of you that are hanging in there, you know, and still watching these videos. If it's blessing you, then that blesses me. And I am very grateful to those of you that are leaving some comments and sharing some things with me, the emails that I've gotten and the just even answers to prayer or how God's using different things in your life or where you're at or asking for prayer, you know, just feeling a little more connected to each of you. I love that. And I thank you for that. I, I think we all need that connection with each other. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you are invited to subscribe and, and join our little family here at Coffee in a Chat where we just keep it raw and real. And it is what it is. And God's number one. So I think that pretty much sums it up. I'm just sharing stories and life lessons um, of what I go through for wherever that maybe can encourage you um, and help you through something. That's what it's all about. All right. So subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Um, that helps me out with YouTube and then then that helps me be able to reach more people and I want to reach as many people as I can with whatever days I've got left right and it's not wanting to reach them because I'm trying to build some something for me but it's because I'm trying to be a part of building something for God which is you and impacting your life so I want to encourage you in your growth and your walk and those of you that are even maybe just kind of curious about God share with you what he does in my life and and uh, it's already impacted some people I've already seen 
I've already seen someone say, I want to be all in with Jesus because the stories have encouraged them in that way. That is, that is the ultimate. All right. So I love you guys. You have an awesome day today and I'll meet you right back here again tomorrow with whatever the Lord has given me. And maybe he'll do it a little earlier. I don't know. It's like I have to have these experiences in the day to see what it is he wants me to share with you. And so that's okay. It's it's his schedule, not mine. It's all good. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.